Do we have time for another video today? I think we do. And I've got lots of a heat treated petrified coral that I need to nap. Yep. All right, so I will be yapping during this video. Mm, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. So I was talking about Utsi the Iceman yesterday. And uh, I got some comments on it. And I forgot some things to me I forgot to mention some things. I forgot to mention what I thought about the everything that I was thinking about the bow itself. Or supposedly what that stick is that he's carrying. There's x-rays and there's uh, studies of the grain on this on that supposed bow stave. It is made of yew wood, right? But he also used yew wood for the handle of his axe. So, uh, which is kind of unusual because of the properties of yew. It must have been a, a tough variety of yew wood. To use it for an axe handle, but anyway, uh, I'm thinking that it was not a bow, but you know, like a shepherd's staff, or it, it's it's pretty crude looking. It's not sanded down or polished or anything, or smoothed down. It's just roughly, it's roughly carved out with something. Which leads many people to believe that it's, it's incomplete or incomplete bow. But as I was saying earlier, or just now, uh, they've done x-rays and studies of the grain pattern. And the grain pattern doesn't line up with the supposed back of the bow. It does have kind of like a D cross section. And you'd think that the flat part would be the back of the bow. But that's not the case. I think the grain is the opposite, where... The, the flat part violates the grain of the bow. I'm pretty sure, or the supposed bow, I'm pretty sure the grain's violated pretty pretty badly. Um, but he also had a quiver, supposedly. It was his. I say supposedly it was his because, as far as I know, the bow was not found next... I mean, the, the quiver was not found next to the body. It was found some some meters away, maybe two or three meters away from the body. It may not have been his quiver, but let's just assume that it is. He didn't have any arrows in it that he could shoot. They all seem to be a little bit damaged. Well, the two of them that he had in there that had arrowheads seemed to be a bit, a bit, a bit damaged. Uh, and he had some viburnum shafts. They were getting ready to be made into arrows, I suppose. I say, I suppose, because it may not have been his quiver. Now, I think the, the U staff or the U stick the long piece was found next to the body I think or with the frame or it looks like a backpack frame I think they get they've gotten most of the equipment misidentified except for the knife and the obvious things like the little pieces of flint that were in his belt you know they look like little tools But everything else seems to be up for debate. There's many, many conjectures. Yeah, so 
I'm thinking that he was a, a, a goat herder who was robbed and murdered. And uh, he had, defen had a defensive wound on one of his hands. I forget which hand. It was cut deeply, like with a knife or something. Like a defensive wound. So he was in a fight, for sure. Now, I said that he had died in the wintertime. Uh, that was not correct. Uh, it was... It was early spring because they found pollen on him and then pollen in his lungs and pollen in his stomach. Right? So, uh, the, the pollen in his stomach it can be explained uh, in various ways. You know, he might not have eaten pollen recently. He could have, I mean, not eaten pollen that was gathered recently, but eaten pollen that was gathered from a previous season uh, but the pollen on his clothing and in his lung that would indicate that it was early spring but where he ended up dying had snow cover I am assuming yeah and uh I said he didn't have a coat. Well, they, they found a what looks like a coat or a section of a coat that was made from strips of goat hide sewn together in vertical strips. But my thinking on that is that it that's that's like a, a ground cover or a blanket or some kind of mat to sit on or to lay down on because it was very very dirty. Or had lots of earth or uh, dirt on it. Uh, that's not something that seems like you'd be wearing. It, you know, being really, really dirty, you would think that it would it would probably be put on the ground or something as a mat or some sort of barrier between you and the and the ground. You know, between him and the ground. That's why I'm thinking he lost, or his coat was stolen. Maybe even along with his actual bow for the arrows, if those arrows are his. Now, would you carry a staff, like a shepherd's staff, and a bow at the same time? I think it can be done, especially with lightweight wood, like you. You is pretty lightweight. You can carry both. The bow can be slung onto your back. That sort of thing. And it would be pretty valuable if it was well made. And it would be a lot easier to find on the ground if it happened to, you know, fall into the snow. It's a pretty big item. It's uh, probably less likely to be lost in the snow if it got dropped. An axe would be much easier to lose, so that's why it stayed around. That's what I'm thinking. And the he has like a straw. What they're thinking is a straw rain, raincoat type thing, or a rain poncho made of straw, or tall grass, or something like that, right? They show him with this thing made of straw or long grass draped over his shoulders that, you know, to resemble a rain shield or a rain, not a raincoat, but you know what I'm saying. Rain poncho? I don't know. What, what do I think that is? Well, since it's not complete, it's anyone's guess because there's only a section of it left. But I think, I think it's pretty much complete, and it's it's an apron because it has a tie around one end. They're thinking that's to go around his neck, but it's not complete. There's a bunch missing, 
I think it's pretty much complete and it's just an apron for, for the front of him. If you assume that most of it's still there, right? And then what, how would you use something that's only partially covering? Well, you use it as an apron. Yeah, cover just the front of yourself. So what would he use it if it rained? He needs something for the rain. Well, that's what his coat was for. He probably had a, a felt coat or a fur coat. His fur hat was well made, which leads me to believe that he had a well made coat as well. But we, you know, never know because it doesn't exist, so it's just conjecture on my part. But that's what I'm thinking. Anyways. Yeah, there's a lot of details that I did mention, but I just went over the, the basic, my basic thoughts on, let's see. And what the equipment is. I've tried to make a replica of the quiver, but I couldn't find exact measurements online of what of the sizes and everything and it happens to be broken it has a stick on one side like it's it's a pretty typical design where there's a stick a stiffener on one side but it's broken in three pieces so if it did belong to him it wasn't stiff it was kind of it's all broken and stuff i don't know um it looks like he just found it somewhere or scrounged it from somewhere just carrying it around with himself just carrying it around the arrows were not complete or they were but they were damaged they had actually human blood I think on one of the arrows had two human blood from two different people on one of the arrows I think that's what the, I think that's correct so that's kind of weird yeah arrows for shooting people yeah, kind of weird. And the arrowheads that were on the arrows don't match very well with arrows made locally there where he was found. They match arrowheads from further south, I believe. It's either further south or further north of where he died. So they, I'm thinking the quiver wasn't his. Or he came from far away, but I don't know. And why would, they, why would he be so far up in the mountains? If he had a herd of goats, why would he take them up there? You know, I guess to make a crossing, to go from one area to the next. Got to climb the mountain to get to somewhere else. Maybe to hide in a nice hiding spot. Apparently the spot where he's found is like a, um, a depression in the ground. And uh, that's why his body and his belongings were not swept away over time by movement of ice and snow. Because it was in a depression. So he may have been, may have been hiding in a depression. Yeah, the site was full of ice for thousands of years, uh, but the, over the top there was movement of ice and snow, like a glacier look, gla glacier type activity over the top. But it didn't disturb him because he was in a depression. So the ice and snow that was moving over time just 
moved over the top of the site. It didn't disturb the contents of the site. So that's interesting. So it could have been part of, I mean, uh, there could have been more stuff as part of the original site and all that other stuff got swept away and only the stuff within the depression was saved. So he, there might have been more bodies, more equipment. There could have been a battle there that all the other stuff got swept away and we don't know what happened. Or there could have been animal remains of his herd uh, that got swept away. Bunch of stuff could have been swept away. I mean, it's anyone's guess what could have been there. Yeah. But they do know that there was movement over the top of the site. Movement of ice and snow, like a glacier type movement. So anything that was there got moved and eventually got exposed to the elements and decayed long ago because obviously it went further down the hill and the further you go down the hill the warmer it gets yeah or down the mountain this is a pretty high mountain actually I think that he was on So, there's that. Too many questions. And it doesn't help when the people writing about Utsi, you know, make up a bunch of stuff. They immediately think that these things are such and such. The stick is a bow, and the backpack frame is a backpack frame. That frame-looking arched piece of wood with a couple of cross pieces looks like a backpack frame. Someone, I think someone said, I read somewhere that they were thinking maybe it was part of some sort of Uh, gear to be used in walking in snow like a snowshoe but I don't know if that's I don't know if that's correct I'm thinking I remember that but I don't know if I'm remembering correctly yeah I've seen several discussions and um, what do you call it brainstorming sessions on what everything could be Hardly anybody has ever seen the actual layout of the site that the archaeologists drew out. They didn't realize that the equipment was not in one little area. It's spread out in three locations. There's a body in one location, and there's two other locations where the stuff was located. And it's like a few meters apart. It's all kind of spread out. It's not all together around the body. I don't think the axe was found with him either. I don't know. I can't remember. And I looked for my books yesterday, my Utsi books, and I don't see them anywhere. That's not a good thing, because if I left them in Texas, I'm not going to have them available if I want to explore this topic further. Yeah. I have Man in the Ice. I think that's a title. And I have uh, Utsi the Iceman little brochure from the museum. It's kind of a, not a brochure, but it, it's a little booklet. I mail ordered that. The museum put that out. It doesn't have very many pages. And there's one more book. Um, Yeah, and there's a website also that I've looked at quite a bit.
but not many people are interested in replicas of Utsi's stuff. So I never really made any attempt to get into doing the replicas. I did a couple videos on the arrowheads that were found on the arrows. All right, I think I did that on this channel. A long time ago. I got so many different videos on this channel. I forget if it's on this channel or what. I have other I have two other channels. Uh, Allergic Hobbit is my other flint napping channel, but I just use natural tools on that one. I don't know if I did it. An Utsi arrowhead on, on the natural tools channel or not. I keep wanting to make videos to post on that, but I never seem to have time. Or I never seem to be able to make time. Yeah. Okay. This coral naps, this, this heat treated petrified coral naps very, very easily, but it's almost too easy. Yeah, it's very delicate. And if I try to thin it down a lot, I think I'm going to snap it. But I don't want to leave any mess in the middle. Like I'm just, I'm just now doing. And it doesn't like to, it doesn't like to run flakes with just little bitty platforms. It likes to have a big old ground down area. Yeah. Which makes me nervous because when I grind down a big area, sometimes those big areas are too strong and I take a bite out of the side. Yeah. Oh well. I've got to make it, i got to make those edges just right. And don't I have to make them just right all the time? No. Some stone is more forgiving than others. Some stone you can make an, an, just an okay attempt at strengthening the edge and it'll still work. Even when it's just kind of, eh, it's okay. Yeah, but not this. You have to get very close to having no flaws in the edge. What kind of flaws are there, you might say? Just irregularities. That's what I mean by flaws. Why didn't I just say irregularities? Because sometimes it's the stone, sometimes, well... A flaw in the stone, yeah. But, you know, there's all could also be a flaw in the flint napping. I don't know. Take your pick. Irregularities or flaws, doesn't matter. Okay. For a soft material, the uh, the flakes are kind of sticky. They stay on there. They don't fly off. I mean, no, you know, I gotta pick them off. A lot of times with soft material, they just fly off. They fly across the room. They're not sticky. I don't know what causes that stickiness. It's not a bad thing. It's just a little bit time consuming to keep constantly picking off 
the flakes that should have flown because you don't want them interfering with the next flake. Just in case. Oh yeah, I was driving around today and I saw a bunch of wild turkeys. And I just, I was thinking, you know, instead of seeing a lot of deer like I normally see when I'm driving around other places in in the US, I've been, I've driven, I've driven around a lot of different places. Anyway, I usually see deer or rabbits, but no, here I'm seeing lots of wild turkeys, more than I've ever seen. Just in the three or four months I've been here, I've seen more wild turkeys than I have in the past, I don't know, five years in Texas. There's a lot of wild turkeys out here. Or maybe they're not wild. Maybe they're farm turkeys that just kind of look like they're wild because they're free to roam wherever they want. I don't know. Do the, do the farmers let their turkeys just roam around? Maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't let mine roam around. There's lots of stray dogs out here that probably would like to get one of those. If not the foxes and the other predators. I've seen a couple foxes. I've seen, I saw one very recently, actually, across the street from my, from our house. Yeah, right across the street. You can tell they're foxes by the big, huge tail compared to the body. Yeah, they got big old fluffy long tails. Yeah, yeah, that's a fox. So, just when I think there are no more step fractures to worry about. There we go. Is it clean? I think it's clean enough. It's not perfect. Yeah. I'm just messing with, with the symmetry, I'm trying to get some symmetry just by abrading a little bit. Yeah, it works. What do I make out of this? I don't have to make anything actually. I could just sharpen it in, sharpen it up and offer it just like it is. Somebody asked me to make another or make more of the just the blades by themselves. In the last auction, someone just someone asked me, just uh, can I make just a blade by itself? Again. Because I offered a blade last time. I said, yeah, I can do that. Easy peasy. But with what? I don't know. I gotta decide what material am I gonna use for making the blade just by itself. You might be asking, well, is it is that a hard choice to figure out what you're gonna do? Yeah, it is actually. There's a lot of a lot of options and there's stuff that I need to do that I forget. Maybe there's another request that I should devote that piece to. I just I don't I can't I don't know if I've forgotten or remembered all the requests. I 
I don't think there's very many requests hanging around out there. I don't think. Yeah, just when I say that, I can look at my notes and then... Oh, dang, there's like five requests. Dang it. Okay. Is it translucent? Ooh, it's glowy. Yeah. But too bad it's it's not raw or it would be more glowy, right? No? No, I don't I don't think that heat treating it ruins the glowiness. I don't think heat treatment ruins the color or anything. As far as translucency, I think it actually enriches the color, makes it deeper and more earthy, right? I think so. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of jewelry makers, when they use just regular stone, you know, semi-precious they'll, they'll heat some of it up to change the color and if they were concerned that it would ruin the luster or the glowiness of it they wouldn't do it I don't see any of them saying oh maybe I shouldn't heat treat just because it might lose its glowiness <laughs> I never heard a jewelry maker say that because they do make stuff out of, you know, they do make jewelry out of some of the stuff that we nap, especially agates. And maybe you'll say, well, that's the exception. If it's an agate, it's the only exception to the, you know, to the rule. Heat treat's not good for glowy, except agates. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I think that if some jewelry makers could get their hands on some nice translucent flint that had some interesting banding or colors in it, you know, like an agate, they would use it. Yeah, it's cheap. Relatively speaking, why not? Why not use flint or chert or petrified coral for making jewelry of the type that they're doing? You know, they, they make polished little teardrop shapes and stuff and drill little holes in them. Yeah, you can drill holes in stone. They do it all the time. Make little beads. Or whatever. Pendants. Yeah. Anyway, why did I get on that? Because I, I like the translucency of this. It's nice. Yeah. It's great. It's one of the advantages of using petrified coral. It's, it's nice translucency. And when you, when you heat treat it, it becomes exceed, exceedingly good to nap. In many cases, like this, I was able to clean off the surface relatively easily. It's never easy, but it's relatively easy. Yeah. I had to be very careful and not... not bite off more than I can chew as far as the thinning goes on this. Yeah, I can't overdo it on the thinning. Because once you get a bad step fracture in the middle, you can pretty much give it up. I say, yeah, I just gotta let it sit there. Yep. It's gonna be there forever. Can't get to it. Unless I change the whole shape of the piece, 
can't leave, you know, if you make it more narrow, you can clean it up pretty much the way you want. But if you want a wide piece, so sorry, Charlie. I see it won't let me do anything that's even remotely like a shortcut. Someone might bring up, what about Utsi's tattoos? What do you think about the tattoos? The little hash marks like he's got hash marks is that what they call them? vertical lines for tattoos what do i think about that i don't think nothing about that <laughs> there's a weird Maybe those are tallies on his crimes or something. Maybe he was a criminal. I don't, I don't know. They used to tattoo criminals and, or burn burn marks on them so they could tell who was the criminal. Maybe they were for acupuncture purposes, like I've heard. You know, they, they're on acupuncture points on some of those tattoos. They're right there where... Ancient medicine has determined it's an acupuncture point. Who knows what they're for? So that's why I don't I don't think nothing about those. No. Nope, nope. Too much conjecture. Too much conjecture. We don't have any other examples of other people from that time period. Oh yeah, plug in the phone. It says I'm glad my phone reminds me to plug it in because, man, if it didn't remind me, you know, probably one out of five of my videos would shut off because the camera doesn't have enough juice. Yeah. Uh -huh. I remember back in the old days, my camera used to shut off. I guess because it, it didn't give me a notification. I would have to manually look at it. Or not manually look at it, but you know. You know what I mean. It's so not fun to try to explain while I'm napping. It's so not fun. Yeah. But that's okay. I'm, I'm used to not fun. I'm used to not having fun. Just do it. That's what I'm used to. What do I have fun doing? I have fun taking naps. Yeah. Because if I have, if I try to have fun doing anything else, I mess it up. But how how can you mess up a nap? I don't know. I guess if you never take a nap, that will mess it up. Or if you can't sleep, it helps if you're having fun going to sleep because then, you know, there's no stress. That's one thing I can't usually mess up is when I take a nap. I can't, I, it's hard for me to mess it up because I like him. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sounds like just an excuse to be lazy. Or excuse to to excuse my laziness. There you go. Not to be lazy, but excuse my laziness. I'm just trying to be honest. If I have fun 
with most anything else I mess it up yeah gotta be all serious now flit napping I've learned to I've learned to nip, uh, flit nap under various conditions and it's one of those things that doesn't matter what mood I'm in I can still do it I might not do it well but I can still do it uh, unlike other things where I just totally can't do it yeah at least with flit napping I can actually do it even though it might not look good all right so are we gonna look in the book to see what we can make out of this I sharpened it all the way around. It's kind of jaggedy sharp, but it's sharp. It's not perfect, but I don't see any dull spots. So what can I make out of it? Well, let's see. Let's consult the oracle. Yeah. What is, what is the oracle? This one. This is the oracle. Yeah. There are other books on arrowheads, too. Like, Let's see. What is it? We call this the Red Book in Texas, Stone Artifacts of Texas Indians. But I don't, I don't consult that like the Oracle because this one has everything from North America, or at least a little bit of everything. It doesn't have everything. No book has everything. So let's look to see where do I find petrified coral? This is from Florida. So let's see what the Florida. No, Gulf Coastal. Gulf Coastal is where I need to look at. So, that's GC. Yeah, GC. And what can I make? Clovis? <laughs> I don't like doing the Clovises. Yeah, there's Clovis. There's a cowhouse slough. That's almost the same shape. No, it's not. What, what else is there? Someone asked me to make one of those before. Uh, and I looked it up and I said, really? I mean, that's uh, that's so easy peasy. Well, okay. I think I did make one. I want something that has this shape so I don't have to do nothing. Yeah. I don't see nothing. Got to make one of these. Right? Little stemmed point. I never heard of a, of a wakisa. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything that resembles this. Hamilton, I could put a stem on it. Make a Hamilton. It has a little has thinning flakes in the middle. Those are cool. What is a Hamilton? I never. Well, I've have heard of it, but let's see. Harden. Oops, I'm too far. Hamilton. Yeah, it's got thinning flakes. It looks too crude, though. So I don't know what to do. Make a Noonan, right? I think that's what everyone does. Where is Noonan? M-N. Noonan. It's not, it's not the right shape for Noonan. This is too short. This is long and narrow. Marion? Yeah, but I would have to wipe out lots of the stem. How about this? Hillsboro. Let's see what size the Hillsboro. Okay, this is a Noonan also. Noonan and Noonan. It doesn't have to have a big stem. All right, so I might do one of those. But this one, the stem is within the line of the bottom like I can just notch the bottom of this without having to take out too much of the material let's see let's look at him uh, Hillsboro mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think Hillsboro is gonna be my next new favorite yeah Hillsboro yeah see I can just notch the base yeah, and hopefully just minimally, right? Yeah, like this one, or this one, minimal, minimal damage, that's what I like. 
What is damage? <laughs> it's when you ruin the napping because you gotta put a stem on, on it because somebody wants it. It's called damage. Yeah, as so long as the sides curve inward. I can get away with it, you know, with that curve like this, curve inward or downward like that. Yeah, see this curve a little bit downward. I can just take off a little bit, take off a little bit. That's it. That's what I like. Not too much damage. Yeah, do that and I'm done. <laughs> That's, that would work. Yes. Beautiful. But see, these are actual sizes, right? Mine is so huge. These This work piece is too big. I'm just going to do it. Don't. Oh, well, if it doesn't match perfect, it's okay. I don't care. The Himmel, the Hillsboro is my new favorite because it's so easy, relatively speaking. There always has to be that caveat. Yeah. Someone must say what? It's always got to be that caviar. You get, you're having some caviar? No, caveat. It's always got to have that caveat. That it's relatively easy. Something could go wrong and mess it all up. I could eat too much caviar and throw up. Yeah. didn't have any caviar until I was well into my 30s. Yeah. Never had it until I was well into my 30s. I had it at work because someone brought it into the lunchroom of all places. Usually the lunchroom was just coffee and sandwiches. But no, someone brought in some caviar one day. And I said, or someone asked me, you want to try it? I said, no, but I will. I said, okay, there it is. So there you go. The uh, caviar are eggs, right? But they they pop in your mouth like little bubbles. Yeah, so it's kind of bubbly. Bubbly. Like eating bubbles. And I said, this is, this, is, this is not bad. I mean, it's kind of salty, but it's not bad. Not bad at all. I like it. Hey, Mikey. He likes it. I would never go buy it for myself. <clears throat> no. Crazy? Anyways, how do we get onto that? Oh, the caveat. Yeah. I, I said it, it sounded like caviar. <laughs> Golly, I'm cringy. I'm stupid. <laughs> Okay. That's how you get onto that subject? Yeah, that's how I got onto it. You're just now tuning in, aren't you? You you try to skip to the end and you didn't quite make it there and then you you stumbled on my stupidity. Yeah. Aren't you lucky? Yeah. Lucky. Remember that. Remember the luck. Luck has a lot to do with flint napping. More than you might think. Luck is a very big part of flint napping. So now you now you know. Unless you've already advanced it further so you can see the ending. Then you missed it. You missed that luck is a big part of flint napping. 
And a lot of people know that, but they ignore it. Yeah. Because they're ignoramuses. Yeah. It's a flit napping term. They call someone an ignoramus. Yeah. If they ignore something in flint napping, that's what they are. Mm hmm Yep, yep. All right. Let's wrap this up without messing it up. Because it, how do you mess it up? I mean, if I mess this up, that'd be pretty bad. So how do you mess this up? If I make a step fracture in there somewhere. Yeah. If I step fracture it, like a, like a newbie. Is that enough? No? I gotta make that corner sharper. I knew it. I only thought it was done. I'm looking at the book, so yeah, I'm cheating. And I'm also thinking I'm removing way too much. Yeah, it's too much damage. Too much damage. There's the word damn in that word. Yeah, I know. That's why it's funny. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's the word dam in damage. Yeah, and it's not a mistake either. Not around here anyway. It's controlled. When they put the word damn in damaged, it was a controlled effort. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? It's something invented by humans. It must all be controlled in that way. Yeah. Perfectly reasonable. To assume control. Luck and coincidence has nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> Why so much time to do this? Because I don't want to mess it up. I'm taking forever to do this. Where... I could have pressure flaked this in easily. Yeah. Because I don't want no step fractures. I'm going to sell this on Monday. So get ready. Some will say, what? How do you know you're going to sell it on Monday? You got a crystal ball or something? No, I have auctions on Monday. You got auctions on Monday? Where? Here on this channel. What time? 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Dang, I can't even get my own times right. Yeah. It's not a live auction. I just post a video and you bid. And then I announce the winners. 9 p.m. Eastern. Or 9.01. But anyways, I go over the rules every auction, so... I don't need to explain it right now. Okay? All right. Are we good? Yeah. Oh, 
All you gotta know is you're gonna show up on Monday. You're gonna be online anyway, you know you are. Why did I do this? Because it was really thick right there. For some reason, that edge was really thick compared to the other edge. I kind of overdid it with the pressure. Yeah. That's what you gotta do. I hate to do it. I hate to use a lot of pressure to thin it down, but that's a law of the west. And all the west. Yeah, that's from a cartoon. I don't got no original thoughts, you know that. Oh yeah, before I before I wrap up this video, I gotta say that someone mentioned that I should make more of the nap with me, quote unquote, nap with me videos. And they crossed out the study with me in their comment. And I go, what's a study with me video? What is that? So immediately I went to look up study with me videos. And sure enough, I went to the weird side of YouTube. I was in the weird side and I saw that people watch other people study. Yeah. Why in the heck would you watch someone study? So I'm sitting there watching this girl study, medical student. I'm watching it. She's studying. I'm watching somewhere. She's still studying. I say, what, what is it with this? I, I read the comments. The comments didn't help because it was like, oh, this is the most realistic study video I've seen. What? What am I missing here? How, how can it not be realistic? She's obviously studying for some sort of class she's taken in med school. I mean, it's right on the computer screen. You can see it. She's sitting there reading page after page after page. How is this not real? So the comments are not helping. What is it? So yeah, I had to I had to ask Grok and I had to go online to ask Google and sure enough, some people are more productive if they watch or if they turn on a video of someone studying when they're studying. Like if I wanted to study more effectively, I just turn on a study video. It's like with someone else studying, so I feel like I'm studying with someone else, like in a group. Yeah. Apparently that's motivating, or it's it feels comforting. Comforting. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This might be an epiphany. I'll let you know if it was it's a, if it's an epiphany later. That way I can, I can. Uh, Say it was an epiphany instead of saying that I was being dumb. Yeah. But anyway. It might be an epiphany. I might start making nap with me videos. Or make arrow with me videos. So you don't feel all by yourself when you're making the arrow. Or napping. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to be feeling lonely anymore. You can be productive. But you know what? I'm thinking. Wait a second. Some guys already do that. I've heard some of my friends, they say they've got my video on, my napping video, in the background while they're napping. And I just thought it was because they don't like the silence. They don't want to be sitting all by themselves in the, in the garage or whatever, napping to complete silence. And maybe they're getting sick of that album they listened to 14 times in a row. I don't know. But apparently... And I gotta check it out. Maybe I can be more productive if I listen to napping while I'm napping. I don't know. But anyway, if it works out, 
these people are getting thousands and thousands of views on those those study with me videos I was amazed oh, I gotta explore it yeah if I can make videos that have more view count that would help a lot yeah I could buy more rocks uh -huh. You know I will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the only thing I have to worry about these days is uh, birthday money and Christmas money for my kids. They can pay their own insurance. Yeah. I just got to worry about birthday money and Christmas money. And maybe some other... Maybe some other emergency money, but... Other than that, as long as I get my food, I can buy rocks. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> um, you think I'm kidding. And I think I'm kidding. But I'm not really kidding. No. Nope. Alright. Here we go. Did we get those out of the way? I like it. It's a... What is it called again? I lost the page. It's either Hillsborough or Hamilton or... Hunky Dory? I don't know. There it is. Yeah. I didn't need to remove too much off the base at all. How does it look hafted? Yeah, that's what I've been forgetting. Can't forget that. I gotta start incorporating that into every video now. Yeah, because. You know, it's it's actually naked without a haft. Yeah. You don't want to see naked points. Yeah. You want to see fully dressed. This is the clothing of the point. Yeah. <laughs> I am so stupid. All right. Here we go. Does this look like it would be the haft? No, this is too skinny. How about this? Yeah, it's too big. I need to make a smaller one. I do have a smaller one. I don't know where I went. About this. Yeah, that's a little more reasonable. I think this looks like a knife blade, this particular point type. Although it could be a little dark point, but a little dark points to me are in this size range, not this size range. A little dark points are like this size. What is this size? Since my hands are small, you know, what is it? Inch and three eighths or inch and a quarter? Inch and three eighths by two and a quarter. That's a little dart point size. This, well, this is actually bigger than the ones in the book, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. So maybe it isn't at that little dart point. But if this was the correct size, I would use it as a knife. How's that? Okay. Did I fix myself? No, I shall never be fixed. Yeah, I know. All right. I need to get some more knife handles. Yeah, beautiful. That's perfect. That's what I would do. Yeah. And just put a lot of glue in there. Yeah. I mean, it would probably only be used for Fancy, fancy decoration. Because I wouldn't want to do anything with this because it would ruin it. It would chip it and make it dull and I had to resharpen and it would be, it would become nasty. Yeah. So just for, just for display or for once in a while. Yeah. All right. There you go. I like it. I do, actually. Okay, there you go. That's it.